The Wetlands Project, a milestone for more role in the protection of environment. We speak to the people from the company which has been supplying oil products since 1968. RD Construction from scratch to sky, the success story of a young entrepreneur who carved his way from a textile worker to building dreams of people. And in the world, Argentina appoints new finance minister after Dujovnis resigns. The Mauritius oil refineries limited started its operation in 1968 and has today around 190 active employees in line with its national import substitution policy more oil is set to guarantee a continuous supply of the locally refined oil products to the market and today in this edition of business connect we will be looking at the various operations and especially the attention that more oil pays to the ecosystem and today we will be meeting with jerome clarenc who is the commercial director here good morning jerome good morning how are you doing i'm doing fine thanks so Jean, today we are at Moroil and we will be talking about Moroil and its operations. Um, my first question would be, how has Moroil contributed in Mauritius concerning the import substitution strategy? Back in 68, Mauritius oil refineries was among the first industries to be set up under the import substitution scheme. Its core business being the refining and marketing of edible oil. Together with the creation wealth of wealth of our stakeholders, consumer satisfaction is our priority. We strive to provide a consistent supply of edible oil of international standards and a well-implemented food, food and safety quality system. How is the demand on the market for the oil products? The demand on the market for the oil products, um, you, you've got on one side the sunflower oil, which can be a, a bit of a premium market, on the other side, uh, the mass market is soya bean mixed with palm oil in oil. This is sold in pouches and liters, PET liters. And um, the Mauritian community like this oil because we use cooking oil, and this oil is the best for cooking. So this is called, our oil, oil is called Rani. Um, then we have more sunflower and more soya bean oil. So you have a demand for a variety of the oil products, right? We do have a variety of oil products and then we have different segments. The hotel and restaurant market. Um, we cater for them as well with packagings like 5 kgs, 20 kgs. And those markets are emerging. Uh, like the restaurant market is a big market now. Every single mo population, Mauritian, uh, want to, to go uh, outside to have supper, to have lunch, and they, they love going out. So this market is a big market now. Moro's competencies has also enabled the setting up of partnerships with renowned producers. An example being the company Le Chier from France. Moroil is listed on SEMC. How important is this for Moroil? The fact that the SEMC certificate has just been renewed shows our commitment to our social and environmental sustainability. We know that Moroil lays a lot of emphasis on the quality control and the process. Why is it so important to pay attention to this aspect? Our refining at Moroil consists of a series of steps aiming at the transformation of crude vegetable oils into a commercially valuable product. We exercise strict quality control on each and every step of our operations and the refined oils coming out of our factory meet up exigencies of all our stakeholders, in particular customers. At Moroil, the definition of quality is multidisciplinary. Using HACCP as a baseline, we ensure that our products are compliant with international standards and all hazards are safely kept at bay. 
Unlike imported oils, our products are all traceable. Besides eliminating undesirable components, we also promote the preservation of nutritional compounds during our refining. We hence position ourselves to march to the shelf with a wholesome product in terms of benefits such as vitamins and essential fatty acids. We are also very much in line with Halal, Kosher and SA 8000 prerequisites. Our quality standards also extend towards sustainability, where the oils we produce at Morel respect environmental norms all the way through. The constructed wetland, among other initiatives, is a fascinating example of how pollution levels from effluents derived from our refining are abated. Doctor, we're talking about uh, a collaboration on behalf of MRC and Moroil for a wetland project. What is this wetland project all about and why is it important to have such projects done? Yeah, um, so the, the idea of having this project started, I think, two years back when um, Mr. Ravi Shmosha came to see me in my office and talk about a possible collaboration um, for treatment of the water of Moroil. The problem uh, Moroil had before is that the wastewater uh, is quite strong wastewater. But then you can't discharge it in the river like that. So what was uh, Moroil doing is uh, it's a correct practice, cutting away all the effluent uh, from here and of course uh, send it to approved treatment. Now that's an approved uh, method of disposal of wastewater, uh, but it's not, it's not sustainable. So what Moroil wanted to have is a sustainable treatment. So there are strict criteria for having this kind of treatment. So sustainable means you don't need to consume electricity, uh, sustainable means you don't need to use uh, consume chemicals and so on or you use as you can see at the back there all natural resources like plants, uh, gravels and so on. So based on what are the requirements uh, in terms of having uh, a treatment of water here so then we come up with this idea of having this constructed wetland. Uh, constructed wetland is one of the most sustainable treatment that we can have. Well, so we started, me as the research collaborator, so we need to uh, develop the system. So it took us almost two years of investigations and research. So we look into the, the wastewater first, what, what it contains, what are the type of pollutant it contains, and how much pollutant it contains as well. And then we did some absorption tests and other investigations relevant to the development of this project. So through these, serious investigations we get a positive uh, we demonstrated positive results to le uh, that led to the development of this constructed wetland now constructed wetland is just a natural treatment system uh, in which the water flows through, um, through the we call the bed and then you have various removal mechanisms uh, you have aerobic treatment you have an aerobic treatment you have physical treatment, you have chemical treatment, then you have biological treatment as well. So that's what it's all about, this uh, constructive wetland. And, and the importance for Moroil is that it achieve uh, compliance uh, with this charge of wastewater and uh, most importantly to stop this practice of cutting away, uh, that, cutting away the effluent that they used to do before. And that's more sustainable. I think for the oil, um, um, in the context of green production, this is probably one of the best systems that we, we, we developed for that. Herman Lacunza replaces Nicolas Dujovny as Argentine finance minister following Dujovny's resignation on the 17th of August. Argentina's economy minister Nicolas Dujovny has resigned amid a financial crisis exacerbated by the president's defeat in a primary poll.
The country's peso shed 20% of its value against the US dollar after President Mauricio Macri suffered the resounding loss Sunday. Some global brands have apologized to China after showing support to Hong Kong protests. Multinationals are increasingly reliant on China's burgeoning middle class for growth and being shunned by the Chinese market can prove fatal. A report by the Bain Consultancy shows that Chinese consumers make up a third of global luxury sites. The firestorms start with critical reports on state media, which are then whipped up into calls for boycotts on social media platforms such as Weibo and WeChat. Things have taken on a specifically frenzied aspect in recent months, with the Hong Kong democracy protests portrayed on the mainland as a foreign-led assault on Chinese sovereignty. According to our econometric model, in the long term, the Mauritian GDP from the construction sector is projected to trend around 6,163 million rupees in 2020. And the current budget has taken some corrective measures to boost up this construction sector. Today in Business Connect, we will introduce you to such young entrepreneur who has carved its way in this sector. Welcome to Business Connect. Good morning, Deepak. I know you personally, but uh, the viewers of Business Connect would like to know who is Deepak Dulois. Well, Deepak Dulois is a young entrepreneur of age 40 who entered the world of business in 2008. And today, he is the owner of four companies, Audi Construction, Luxim Limited, Queenswood Limited, and Kayser Indian Restaurant. How the transition started for you to enter the construction sector? I was initially working after my secondary school. I had only my SE in my hand. And I started my career in textile industry and then moved on to other factories and then reached uh, to a company, an agency, which was working for uh, American brands. My boss was a Sri Lankan and uh, he got the citizenship of Mauritius after a couple of years of business over here. And then he decided to construct a house. Uh, and then he, he, he asked me uh, to find a contractor, a building contractor here in Mauritius. But uh, somehow it happened that the contractor didn't do the work well. And then I had to take over the, the, the construction. Uh, and then after five months of construction, the project was completed and completed and my boss was really very happy uh, that he couldn't imagine a textile person could do a construction work that well. Mm -hmm. So did you take charge of everything? What did you do? Yes, I took charge of almost every single thing over there mm -hmm. till the finishing of the house. I chose all the materials, I chose everything in the house, uh, even the interior decoration, I took care of that. Mm -hmm. And how did you jump from construction to Luxem to Kesar? Tell us this story all about. At that particular time, I realized that I have a very good skill of construction. And then I decided to come in this construction industry. 2008 was a, a year that I, I always remember because it was a very tough year that I had to take a decision to leave my current job and to enter in the world of business. And then what happened? I created Audi Construction uh, with a team of only five people and with a lot of hard work, dedication and passion. Today we are about 65 people working in Audi Construction. And what are the projects that Audi Construction has already completed till now? Till now we have completed around 94 projects around the island. Mm -hmm. And this includes what kind of projects? We have residential complex, we have commercial buildings, we have villas, we have flats. Has there been any evolution in the past two decades from the motion perspective? Yes, of course, because uh, nowadays with all the loan facilities that bank offers, uh, people tend to be more choosy in terms of their interiors and the material that they choose to build their house. 
earlier it was not the case because earlier people was building house just for the sake of living but nowadays it's you know uh, you build a house better than your neighbor <laughs> you get my point do we have a market for this or we have the clients here in Mauritius yes we do have today we have internet and people use to travel the world and uh, they know what is coal quality and you know the perspective of building houses have changed through time because today uh, people are much more choosy what are the demands of the clients are they too demanding in terms of styling architecture and what exactly they want and how do you manage them customers are becoming much more demanding nowadays why? Because, uh, as I told you earlier, we have internet and we have all the platforms to, to find better houses, to find new models, contemporary models. So uh, customers tend to be more demanding. And then we have the big work to do to find new products, new materials from uh, other countries because we are so limited uh, in, in Mauritius as well. Mm -hmm. So you mean to say you have to travel as well to, uh, like, in a way, satisfy the dreams of uh, the clients? Of course, we have to travel. We need to source all the materials, the finishing. Most, most importantly, the finishing materials. Mm -hmm. When you say that you travel, this means somewhere the choices are being imposed on you, and you have to look for specific materials. Where do you go? Exactly. Normally, we import from India and China and sometimes from Malaysia. In fact, we get pictures, we get proposals from our customers and then the hard work begins mm -hmm. for us. We need to find something similar to that okay. or exact what our customer needs. Mm -hmm. And when we're talking about the styling in Mauritius, what is the architecture uh, trend in Mauritius nowadays? Mm -hmm. For the moment, Modern, minimalistic and contemporary building and concept are being made almost everywhere. Mm -hmm. This is a trend nowadays. What do you mean by minimalistic and contemporary? What are the styles? Give more details about it. This is much more modern. We do not have the sculptures type. We, it's not like a Victorian type. They are much more angular type, square type, and sharp edges. These are the modern building nowadays. What are the challenges that you as a young entrepreneur, you faced while you were setting up your business? See, um, I must say it was not that easy. A big problem is finance to start up your business. I, th I, I think all the business go undergo this problem. And then uh, after finding the appropriate funds, the big problem comes with your labor force. You know, nowadays it's so difficult to get skilled labors because after all, we have a big responsibility to, to, to build the dream of that person that trusted you. What is the success mantra for you, Deepak? Honesty and hard work. These are the two things that you need to make a business successful. Of course. According to you, how is the construction sector contributing to the Mauritian economy? With all the construction around the island, you can imagine how many jobs are being created. The economy is boosted and it also attracts the investors, foreign investors. Do we need specific training or skills to be up to the standard? Yes, of course. We need trained people and skilled people in this trade. Why? Because uh, we have so many compliance. Uh, we need to, to work according to the standard, Mauritian standard. Tell us about this idea of venturing into the food industry. Having a restaurant was my childhood dream. After settling uh, in my construction company, and then I decided, no, we need to diversify, and now it's time to, to, to start up with our hospitality business and then was born Kaser in 2015. Mm -hmm. And where Kaser uh, was started its operation first? Kaser started at the uh, Flak shopping mall at Centre de Flak, uh, where we gained a lot of success and people loved our food because we had our finest uh, chef come, uh, who came from India. Mm -hmm. 
And now where is Queso? We just relocated in Flag near Super U. Here the visibility is much more and we are getting huge response with all our customers and my, our new customers as well. Do you have foreign customers as of well? Of course, we, you know we have a lot of hotels that recommend uh, their customer to our restaurants. And what are the specialities that you uh, provide to the foreign, like the tourists who come to Mauritius or to the clients who come to Kesar? See, we provide uh, northern cuisine, north of India. So it's much more Mughlai cuisine in Kesar. Okay. So it is much more adaptive to f local and foreigners' taste. And lastly, tell us about your ambitions and future projects. Where do you see yourself in the next 10 years? I want to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. And I want to be a reference both in construction and in restaurant. And as well, I want to, to have a chain of restaurant in Mauritius and abroad as well. Thank you for watching Business Connect. This is it from the whole team. Meanwhile, keep watching us on NBC channels. Follow us on Facebook as well on our website. Thank you very much. This is Ashita signing off.